Oh, it's my pleasure. I think your camera went out. Oh, let me see if I can fix that. Hold on. Can you see me now? Yep, I can see you. Okay, great. You got to be excited about the upcoming tour. It's such an amazing lineup. The show is all killer, that's for sure. How did it come about for uh, you? Thank you. Um, well, I'm very excited. I'm also excited because uh, it's kind of the first tour that we're hitting all the cities that I lived in. Because I lived in Houston, Texas, I lived in New York, and LA. So um, I'm pretty excited to, you know, get back to those areas and the venues are really cool. Um, how it came about is, I think what happened, I'm not sure actually, but I think Herman Lee, who, you know, Dragon Force, he saw us at the 70 Tons of Metal and we did a song at the jam uh, on the cruise ship. So maybe he reached out to our agent um, but when he was touring, he approached us. So um, I think that's how it came about. <laughs> Not really sure. And we discussed hologram. I wanted to ask you, um, what are some tracks that we can look forward to seeing live? Uh, yeah, so we are doing, our set is half hour long. Uh, we're definitely doing hologram, soldiers of danger, a basilisk. We're doing the faceless. It's the first time that we'll be performing the faceless. Um, we're also doing unbeatable, uh, and uh, from the unknown album, we're doing digital paradise and the unknown. And you guys always deliver such an amazing live performance. I wanted to ask you: Are there any uh, types of regimens that you go through before you do a show? Hmm. I like to find a coffee shop and go <laughs> relax and have coffee. <laughs> um, but I think, uh, I don't say a ritual. I do like to just uh, get some time to myself and just to make sure everything's ready, go through everything in my head. Um, but yeah, not, nothing special in particular, except for the coffee shop, of course. And as far as touring, it always lends itself to things that do go awry and not quite as expected. Do you have any funny road stories that you can share? Oh man, <laughs> uh, to share. Well, let's see. I mean, when we started the van, we did the whole uh, tour in the van thing situation mm -hmm. with a trailer uh, and we toured cross country ourselves and we pl had plenty of situations where uh, we had tires on fire, we we hit wow. a deer times um, that busted our radiator. We had to go duct tape it and keep putting gallons of water in until we could get somewhere that we could repair it. Uh, our one time we upgraded to an RV and it was really, 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 really old RV. <laughs> and every single tire went out. Yeah. Wow. So, no, it was crazy. Because we didn't look at it. Well, we, our bass player looked at it and he said it was fine. And of course <laughs> it wasn't. But um, yeah, I mean, stories like that. <laughs> Thankfully, those were in the past. So, fingers crossed everything goes well we're you know now we're very experienced so we know what to look out for and uh, we make sure well hope and make sure that everything hopefully goes smoothly we upgraded our spaceship let's just say <laughs> that's great and on november 8th you hit my backyard in cleveland i mm -hmm. wanted to ask you um are there any sites that you look forward to seeing there 
Uh, yes. Well, I have to, I made a list because I asked people, um, what are some places that we must see? So I have a whole list of things and Cleveland was definitely on the list. I forget what it was exactly right now, but there are two places that people mentioned. What about, what, what do you think we should see? Uh, definitely the Rock Hall. Rock Hall fame right. is a great site. And, uh, also in Canton, Ohio, which is about uh, maybe 45 minutes away is the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'm mm, sure okay. some of the guys may be interested in that as well. Yeah, definitely. So a few places to check out for sure. And uh, as far as prepping for the tour, that's a task of its own. Um, how, how long do you practice your set before you head out? Yeah, I mean, we we always try to rehearse even if we don't have shows. So we've been rehearsing a lot, but, you know, prepping for the tour, um, it's more like uh, figuring out the set, figuring out the show, you know, the live show, um, our sound system, uh, because, you know, when you go on different tours whether it's europe or us um you know we have to figure out a lot of our equipment so that was a big part of prepping this time we uh changed up a lot of our sound equipment uh so that took a bit of bit of time to prepare um also we're thinking about you know just from the stage show perspective uh from the look from the clothing from the lights mm. so um, yeah, it's been um, about two months that we've been preparing, so um, we're excited that uh, it's about two, what, a few more weeks away. So. Now I'm painting a lot of little paintings to take with me for the merch, so I can show you a few. I think I, I have one here. I'll show you. So I'm making these mini ones. You'll have to pull so. up your video. I don't have you on my video right now. In oh, really? Fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> I have a I have a picture of you in front of me, but I I can't see you. Can you see me now? No. Weird. Um, yeah, let me try to um, go back again and see if I can get you. Yeah, I can't uh, seem to get you. Let me see here. Hmm. Uh, I see you very well. Yeah, I can't uh, see you right now. There you are. I got you. <laughs> well, here's a picture. Oh, that is excellent. So you will be taking them to shows? Yes. Yes, definitely. I'm trying to make 10. Well, maybe I'll, I'll try. I don't know how many I'm able to make, but <laughs> as many as I can. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to ask you, um, when you are traveling on the road, what are some things you like to do the past time when you're on the road? I'm always um, excited and prepared to do a lot of things, <laughs> but somehow there's like things get so hectic because, you know, after the shows, you're tired. So um, you figure out how to get some sleep and there's driving involved. So you're always kind of doing something. Then when you wake up, you already arrive to the venue. And when you're at the venue, around one o'clock um you know you start setting up there's sound um sound check <laughs> then you have to you know get ready and everything just goes non-stop so even though i'm always like oh, i'm gonna write some things i'm gonna read some things i'm gonna mm -hmm. make videos so <laughs> most of the time it's just focusing on the shows and but when we have days off, we always like to go explore and look around new areas. Sure. Uh, we, you know, check out sites and sightsee. And uh, 
I wanted to ask you, um, will there be, um, uh, will you guys actually uh, get to meet the band, other bands on tour before the tour actually happens? Um, you mean other bands that are on the tour? Yes. Yeah, yeah, of course, because, you know, we're all there um, for the whole day. <laughs> so, yes, we're always, um, you know, running into each other. And, um, you know, I mean, you never know who you're going to strike a friendship with. But, like, on the last tour, everybody, you know, we hung out with pretty much all the bands. Um, and we made, you know, really good friends. So. And, uh, you know, in Dragon Force, I'm, I already know Alicia, I Herman. I've never met the other bands yet, but they seem really nice. So excited to meet them and hang out. And uh, you guys are also doing a meet and greet. I wanted to ask you if you could tell your fans about it. Uh, yeah, so meet and greet happens, you know, before the doors open. And it's really nice because uh, you kind of get the times to just meet people and chat and um, kind of catch up. Um, so this time we're trying to make it a bit more special mm -hmm. even. Last time we had a lot of fun. Uh, so we're kind of bringing that back to this meet and greet, but we're also um, creating a USB drive with exclusive content that's never been released from like instrumental tracks to demos, uh, to some earlier songs, some songs that we've never finished. Um, there's gonna be a, the first chapter of the graphic novel is gonna be on there. Uh, some band photos through the times, you know, like when the band first started. Sure. So just some really uh, things that uh, people can kind of get a look even further inside of our world. Um, and then we're also taking Polaroid photos like we did last time. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we are, you know, of course, you can people can bring anything for us to sign. We're also doing the poster giveaway as well. So um, and, you know, of course, the best part is to just chat and get to know uh, people. Sure. Because there are things to do. Yeah. And uh, one of the great things about the band is watching you guys grow i mean things have really gone on the upside since we first spoke uh, years ago and uh i wanted to ask you in going through that um do you feel like added pressure now mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it was um, interesting because if, yesterday, actually, I was going through a lot of our old, um, just kind of history, right, of the band to create mm -hmm. that USB stick. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just looking back, it's really crazy how much, how much ups and downs and just all this stuff that we've gone through and we made. And I was thinking about this the other day. I really want to start taking the time more to uh, really appreciate each moment and really kind of live in the now, as cheesy it, as it may sound, because time goes by so fast and all the experience I've had, um, you know, I just really want to make sure that I um, enjoy, even though sometimes it's very hard and, you know, you go through a lot of different things when you're in the band right like sure um, a lot of not so fun moments a lot of fun moments so just kind of really taking the experience but yeah i mean it's been a wild journey so it has uh, it's been a great one as well thank you thank you very much it's been a wonderful oh. looking at from my perspective seeing the band evolve and uh, get stronger with every release thank you i think it means a lot i'm just glad that we got past the covid you know pandemic and um we're able to you know be on the road again and tour and people are coming out so just grateful for that because it was a bit scary <laughs> sure. yeah i think it's scary for all of us because 
it's the whole uncertainty, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. where you get those moments where at least for me is like, Jesus, this is the end, you know, is this, the, this how it's going to be, you know? And, uh, I think that really made us all appreciate, um, what we had before and especially like the experience of getting out to a show and supporting the bands that you love because uh, Mm -hmm. those experiences are are priceless those are things you take with you forever yeah yeah it's true i find myself i'm at i'm gonna be 58 next month and i find myself going Wow, you know, I, I had the experience of seeing Iron Maiden, the Number of Beasts tour, open up for Judas of Priest, the Scream for Vengeance tour. You know, oh, wow. when they were just starting out, and you know, I think, wow, that's an experience that so many people wish they could have experienced. You know, that are younger now. Right. That's and so I think, cool. You know, it's a it's a great thing to make them memories, and and that's a best part of going to a show is the memories that you you share between the band and yourself because the songs that move you by bands are are like pictures in time you listen to a song and it takes you back to a moment that was special to you in one way or another yes that's very true that's very interesting to talk about like that but you're absolutely right and lastly, I wanted to ask you, um, one, if you could give a message to your fans and also uh, if you have a message for Cleveland, Ohio, because I know uh, I'm definitely ready uh, for you guys to bring the house down. <laughs> well, we are very excited because it's been a long time coming for us. I don't think we've actually we've been to ohio once many 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 years ago it was not cleveland so we're very excited to finally make it to cleveland um and can't wait to meet you of course as well so i just want to say thank you to the fans thank you for supporting us through the years uh we are ecstatic to be able to share this new music It's so much fun to play it on stage and to share it with people. So um, we're just counting down the days. Um, But yeah, I just want to say thank you and um, come say hello to us. We always hang out after the shows as well. We like to do the VIPs because VIP meet and greet because it's before the doors open and everything's quiet and we get that time to hang out. Um, after the shows by the merch table, it's always very chaotic, but we love to say hi regardless. So um, it's always fun. And um, also keep your eye out for the graphic novel. It's going to be coming out early next year. I'm um, really excited to introduce the story that ties together the last few albums. So thank you again. Yes, I'm excited for it. Um, and Uh, We spoke about your artwork being in it as well. Yeah. yeah. So I'm busy making the art. (laughs) (laughs) And lastly, I got to ask you, are there any songs that are um, you guys have been uh, working on in the past uh, few months? Yeah, we actually have two new songs now um, that are going to be on the next record and they are a whole new energy and um, because the next chapter is starting to evolve and um, these songs one of them is a bit darker the other one is very kind of um, ener- high energy really pumps you up but the songs kind of start exploring the idea you know now that we're kind of rebuilding a new world and um getting hold of this technology that pretty much makes you limitless um are we turning into what we were running away from in the first place so it's kind of exploring um the the line of the line of because i haven't really talked about this so this is kind of exciting to me but it's exploring 
um, the fine line of not turning into what you were basically, like I said, mm-hmm. running away from um, if you have access to this limitless power. So that and, song um, is called, yeah. Go ahead. The songs is called Martyr and the parentheses Monster. Actually, we're not sure if we're going to call it Martyr or Monster. And the other one is called Rogue. So, wow. Yeah. Well, that's exciting news to hear that things are progressing this well. Yeah, thank you. And as far as AI is concerned, um, do you see it personally as a help or a hindrance as a songwriter? What? See what it is a help or a hindrance? Um, you know, as far as, uh, like, you know, now AI can uh, help you uh, do a paper, can help you write a song. Um, oh, you know, AI? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, hmm. Well, I guess it depends how you use it. I mean, I'm, I remember we were in the studio and I just, you know, I like to look around on different apps and just for fun. And I come across this app and it's create, create a rap song in under a minute. And it's insane <laughs> because <laughs> you put in any words you want. You pick a rapper that you want it to sound like. So you literally can pick any voice and it replicates it very well, I would say. Um, And then you pick a sound sample that you want your song to sound like. So you just, you know, so I picked the whatever, I forget what I chose. And then I put David Hungry and it spit out a full rap song with lyrics that are like, Dave is hungry and he's like, like it went into a storyline about how mm. Dave is hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and I must say it was a very entertaining song and we were laughing, but I mean, I definitely AI is nowhere near where, you know, a person can create something meaningful. Um, I mean, you can use it as a tool to maybe like, put in some words and get some synonyms or um, some words that, like I know some writers are using it and uh, you know some other writers are looking at it like it's cheating, <laughs> you know, some people right. look, people use it as a tool. I personally haven't used it yet um, because I like to dive, you know, I like to make the music first and then the music sort of gives me ideas about the words. And uh, I like to kind of get in my own zone and, you know, keep everything else out, like the AI. <laughs> right. So, but. Yeah, I think, um, you know, in a lot of ways, eventually, um, it's going to be hard to not see music created by it because it's, you know, especially in the, uh, Maybe in other genres um, where um, it's all about the catchiness and it's all about, you know, maybe a couple random verses, but it's not the content wise isn't as great. And uh, yeah. I, I see it being used in that format. I agree. I agree with you. And I noticed some artists um, was talking to one earlier and and it's like s- some people in the, I think in the comic world, uh, you know, in like the graphics world, um, they used AI to create the art for the comic or the graphic novel. I was I'm not sure what it was. And they won the competition because it was a part of, a, the book was part of some competition and it won or you know whoever created it using ai right. but a lot of people noticed and um were eventually proved that it was created by ai 
So I, I don't know if they took the award back or what happened, but people were able to recognize the difference between, you know, an authentic creation by a human and sure. this AI. Um, but also I was talking to the artist that created our cover art because he, Alex Torres, he did concept art for movies before, and now the movie studios they're choosing to go the AI route because it's much cheaper and faster. But then you see the images are, you know, they're more streamlined. They're maybe not as inspired. So I hope that it's, it's kind of sad that, you know, these bigger studios that have the budget to hire the best artists are going the cheap route just to sure. save some money. And yeah, I, don't, I think it's going to, be at a cost of you know the visuals that we come to love you know I, I think we'll be able to recognize but I'm not sure if people that are growing up in this new world of you know will be able to recognize it because everything is so commercialized so it's interesting to think about you know and as an artist yourself um the way I see it is uh there are certain things that you can replicate, but you can't replicate emotion and you can't replicate feeling. You know, I can't see AI getting to a point where um, it can transfer human emotion because the way you may see a situation and I see it a situation may be through a different light. And that's the wonderful thing about being human and to, uh, you know, a concept such as love. Love to you may be one thing, to me may be a different way, but in essence, it's still love. Mm -hmm. And I think um, <clears throat> to make a streamlined definition of an emotion or a feeling like that would be very hard to replicate because it's different for all of us. Yeah, yeah, I wonder, you know, they can mimic it, but I feel like you know we will know <laughs> sure yes well i wanted to thank you for taking time to speak with me it's always a pleasure speaking with you oh thank you likewise likewise always have fun speaking with you and i'll see you next month yes absolutely i look forward to it yes. we finally get to meet in person i know i know exciting exciting <laughs> well thank you enjoy the rest of your day. I am uh, actually, uh, I'm playing the cook today. I am uh, doing a Thanksgiving meal. I'm actually cooking a turkey and uh, all the fixing, making some homemade dressing. So uh, I got my work cut out for me today. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. We'll have fun with it. we Will do. And you take care and have a great rest of your day as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye.